Okay, we had the new parts come through from the factory. We'll get them on the car ahead of FP1. Hey, what's up guys, Arava here, and welcome back to another episode of my F1 2018 career mode, episode number 69 today for the Monaco Grand Prix in Season 4. If you guys did miss the previous episode, then, then be sure to go check that one out before you see this one. We're heading into then Monaco, McLaren, Ferrari, Red Bull, all with updates here. You can see McLaren pretty much copying the same exact trajectory we've got um, on that performance chart line. Renault plateau a little bit, but of course they've been improving steadily for the last three episodes, so there was bound to be a point where they slowed down a tad. You can see uh, Mercedes also slow and Toros to continue their upward trend. Toros are really the only team that have continued to make updates pretty much every single Grand Prix ever since Bahrain I think, be it a minor, major or ultimates really and Red Bull also make strides though so they maintain that gap at the front so it's going to be a difficult one maybe around here and Red Bull obviously should technically go well anyway at Monaco even before you get to the fact that they've upgraded still this weekend and maintain their uh, advantage on paper and last episode we saw Verstappen with a very dominant victory at the Spanish Grand on pre. So I think now is maybe the time where Red Bull, although they had a bit of a shaky start to the season with some DNFs with Ricardo, they now might be looking to build some momentum here in Monaco and try and go up a gear essentially in their performance to not use a, a no, no pun intended there. But uh, we're going to go straight to qualifying and then of course one of the most important qualifyings, if not the most important qualifying session of the entire season of 21 races we go to. So on screen at the moment you would have seen we start to Q1 there, very overcast conditions and we've actually gone for two flying laps on the same set of Hypersoft tyres there wasn't happy with the first run the second run is much better and gets us up into p13 ultimately the only goal was to get into p into q2 obviously but verstappen right up there carlos signs those surprises and so the Renault guys might be looking pretty handy as well they've not got too bad aero remember into this season we've seen i think they're the second best team on aero i think on the on the r d tree so they should also go well so maybe Renault, i don't know obviously they provide engines for red bull but maybe they looked at red bull and thought okay maybe we should develop the aero a lot it seems to be working for red bull uh, in the recent kind of a few races there so uh, they might be going well so you we might be seeing a Renault v Red Bull battle hopefully we can join them but at the same moment like I said they maintain their advantage Red Bull have so I'm not overly confident we'll see how this goes Monaco is all about the driver really more than the car so if we can just do a good job we might be able to drag this car up uh, the aura and do really well but you know still despite uh, saying that so far Monaco on the F1 2018 game has been so hectic that I have yet to even have a very good race at Monaco really if you think about it as we get into Q3 then Q uh, in P10 uh, just on the mark there Pierre Gasly just misses out to have a free choice of tyres though his team member and Hartley though makes it through so surprising to see Hartley beating Gasly there around Monaco but yeah like I said you know um, I'm still waiting for a great result at Monaco last, uh, last on last year's game F1 2017 Monaco was like the guarantee place where you could kind of win in any kind of car but this year because it's so chaotic with the AI kind of you know having incidents with not only themselves but you as well and the traffic I feel is even more horrendous on F1 2018 than it was uh, to navigate in 2017 I've not had amazing Monaco Grand Prix so far so we're still waiting for that and obviously the start of that is hopefully having a good Q3 lap time so here we are then on the second flying lap in Q3 because we had two sets to burn on uh, of these Hypersoft tyres thankfully so we go through into the last sector there through Rascas and towards the last corner and at the moment we're P9 but I'm hoping we can get it towards the sharp end of the grid as we swing through the last corner with no wheel spin so pretty great exit and opening DRS running to the line plenty of time gain on the top right across the line and it's going to be P5 in the end with Raikkonen way down the order in P10 he's got a very slow lap time so I suspect Raikkonen maybe got held up on both his lap times there uh, with Ricardo on pole position uh, Alonso P2 surprise uh, Science does an amazing job in third place there and uh, beats Holkomer quite thoroughly. So far this season, Holkomer has been the lead Renault there, but Science pulling out, out of the bag, so it's a Spaniard 2 3. I'm pretty happy with P5 though, behind Verstappen there. I think that's probably maybe the best we could have hoped for. Looks like I definitely dragged the car up a tad. Hamilton does really well as well, I've got to say, in that Mercedes car because it doesn't really warrant uh, P6, you would think. And obviously, Hartley and Leclerc, I mean, they're just, it's just fair play that they're in the top 10 anyway. So P5, we can work with this, I think. Obviously, it is going to be tricky with traffic, but we'll just have to see how it goes. Obviously, last season in Season 3, we had an absolute pile-up here at Monaco. So you just never know what could happen, what could change the Grand Prix. So let's just head into Sunday then and see how we do. A proper road race and in the true meaning of the word. That was how Mr. Monaco, the late great Graham Hill, once described this iconic event. The cars we drive have come a long way in the intervening half century, but still we race on those same public roads beside the Mediterranean Sea. 
there's no victory more coveted than that of the Monaco Grand Prix. The astonishing Circuit de Monaco is, for all intents and purposes, virtually unchanged since its inaugural race back in 1929. The faster cars of today, though, ensure the 19 corners past the casino and along the seafront remain as thrilling as ever. A 2.1-mile lap here takes us around an entire country, yet never more than inches from the race-ending barriers. Anthony Davidson is here once again for today's Grand Prix. Let's talk about the engineer. What do you make of their performance so far this season? They've been avoiding mistakes and have had solid pace, so it's been a good season so far, but whether they can keep that up long term remains to be seen. We're almost ready to go then, and this is what the starting grid looks like for today's race. Daniel Ricciardo starts from pole position today, and it's Fernando Alonso in P2. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Sainz, Verstappen, the engineer, and Hamilton, Holkenberg, Hartley, Leclerc, and Kimi Raikkonen, Gasly, Ericsson, Valtteri Bottas, and Grosjean, Perez, Van Dorn, Kevin Magnussen, and Esteban Ocon, Stroll, and Sergei Sorotkin rounds off the grid. And now it's time to head down to the track. So thankfully, a little bit surprisingly here at the Monaco Grand Prix, for the first time, I haven't really mentioned gearbox issues or engine issues here. We've got no uh, kind of uh, need to worry about a gearbox wearing out too much in the race. The gearbox, I think, is uh, about 50% or 55% worn, so that's uh, perfectly fine and safe. So it took four seasons for me to stop worrying about that at Monaco, because consistently from seasons one to three, that's been a worry. But we can just focus on the race then, which will be, at the moment, a default two stop with hypers to two sets of ultras. But of course, we're going to try and go for that standard one stop here at Monaco, be nice and stubborn just like they are in real life there and go to the super softs and go to the end of this Grand Prix. The trickiest part will be really taking those hypers long enough to make the super softs last then to the end of the Grand Prix. But apart from that, it's that usual Monaco feeling there that we're going to get held up in traffic and we just have to do the best job we can and really just suck it up and hopefully get a good getaway here. We're going to be alongside the Stappen into turn one, which is always nerve wracking, but we'll try our best. So here we go then towards five red lights, the dual in the Formula 1 calendar, the Monaco Grand Prix here. Who will be crowned the Master of Monaco in Season 4? Fire lights are out and we're underway and it's a great getaway for us there in first and second gear compared to Verstappen into Turn 1. We go side by side with the Dutchman as Sainz tries to get Alonso up ahead for P2. Verstappen gets a great exit though. He's got us back there and he's planting the power a lot earlier and the traction for the Red Bull comes in clutch and he gets up into P4. Ricardo leads the way from pole position nice and cleanly for him as now Alonso gets a push away by Sainz and that allows us to go down the inside of Verstappen there. Verstappen had to slow up for Alonso so a bit of a domino effect and into the hairpin we are going to maintain that P4 and so that's a nice overtake opportunistic there that was Sainz squeezing out Alonso almost pushing Alonso into the barrier and that slowed up Verstappen there allowed us to get the move on the right hand side down the hill towards Mirabeau. Great stuff as we go through the tunnel then we're going to chase after Fernando Alonso but it's uh, now Sainz is the lead Spaniard in P2 with a great getaway in that Renault so he's going to be very happy about that and look at that actually he's on the back of uh, Ricardo there in that shot. So could we have a Sainz v Ricardo battle? That would be quite exciting around Monaco, but we're going to try and battle our old uh, teammate then from last season once again, just like the Spanish Grand Prix. Uh, we can't get rid of Alonso. It seems we're just meeting him at any point in the circuit every single race here for a battle there. So, uh, you know, F1 just asking for some sort of controversy with me and him eventually, but hopefully not right now, not today here at Monaco. Hopefully we'll just try and navigate around him, but as you can see at the moment, through that last corner was proving very difficult on lap three and will prove difficult for a lot of this race I think because it's let's be honest it's Fernando Alonso he's not going to give up the position too easily but we're going to try and size up a move now we've got a good exit off that swing pull chicane maybe around the outside of Rascasse do the reverse of the infamous overtake we like to do try around the outside but Alonso again parks it we get the deer race open but we just don't have the the traction there we get a lot of wheel spin in third and fourth gear and hit the wall thankfully no you are front wing off there and so for now left frustrated on lap four unable to get past him and actually actually worrying about the tire wear and with the staff and sniffing around my rear end as well as we climb the hill towards casino square but again here on the next lap lap four we're faced here in sector three trying to size up a move in rascas this time though feeling like the one down the inside and here we go lock up on the front right but we made it a tiny bit of contact there on the inside but it's monaco there's going to be a little bit of contact here and there if you're trying to make an overtake around this circuit i feel like it's either a tiny bit of contact
back to non-overtake or no overtake at all. And that's a very nice move in my books there on Fernando Alonso. He comes in the pits anyway straight after I made that move. So that was a little bit frustrating that he was going to come in that lap. But hey-ho, I'd rather make the overtake anyway for the sake of just making the overtake. And so we're up into P2 now. Ricardo continues on. Interestingly enough, actually, I didn't mention this at all. Ricardo qualified in Q2 on Ultrasoft tyres. So he is the only man in the top 10 there that started on the middle compound of tyres. So everyone else, including myself, is on hypers in the top 10. They've all picked to try the two-stop. I'm still going long trying to make the one-stop work. And it means that Gasly is down me inside there in the Toro Rosso car. Remember, he was knocked out in P11. And so he had a free choice of tyres. He's also on the ultras. And those ultras off tyres now are going much better than my hypers. You can see I'm losing so much time hand over fist in every corner now as the tyres go off the cliff a little bit. But I need to stretch these tyres for at least one more lap. And I do so. And on the end of lap eight, I'm going to come in there. But clearly you saw the tyres were in a bad shape because the Toro Rosso was, uh, well, overtook me very rapidly there. And so it was Ricardo in P1, Gasly in P2. We've come in now for super soft tyres. And unlike my teammate, Alonso Verstappen, everyone else in the top 10 apart from Ricardo, everyone has gone on to, I believe, ultras. And we'll be doing that two-stop. That was default. I'm doing the one-stop onto super soft. Ricardo, Gasly, and everyone outside the top 10, I assume, will be trying the one-stop. So now this is where the traffic hits. And this is where we need to take advantage of that and try and catch up to cars and overtake them in traffic. We know we're better at doing that than the AI are on themselves. And in that vein, by the time we get through Mirabeau into the hairpin on lap 10, we caught up this train of Leclerc, your Hartley, my teammate Raikkonen's also in there. We haven't seen Kimi this entire race, of course. He started P10, remember? So uh, I don't think he's going too well in this Grand Prix. I think he must have got caught up in a lot of traffic in the opening uh, stage of that Grand Prix. But let's try and see if we can overtake Leclerc soon enough. By the end of lap 10, we're going to maybe try Popper on the outside there. The sound we're going very slow through Raskas there but again like with Alonso's move I can't make a move on the outside there and then the McLaren of Van Dorn closes up we've got DRS though on Leclerc can we make a move into turn one maybe do we enough speed no not quite and so we're just nose to tail with Leclerc Van Dorn also there as we climb the hill then unfortunately I think we're gonna have to be patient here and wait for another move in Raskas on Leclerc but we've been hit by Van Dorn Van Dorn spun us round a front wing half a front wings off and Van Dorn and me face each other I'm facing the wrong way at the Monaco Grand Prix Van Dorn comes through, going to swing round the car, but just like that our race has gone from pretty damn good to absolutely appalling now because Van Dorn, for whatever reason, has decided to try a move that wasn't anywhere near being close to being possible and spins us round. Let's look on board here and just see what on earth the Belgian man, the man who took my car from last season at McLaren. What on earth he was thinking about trying to pull some sort of impossible move on the inside in a straight line up there in such a tight area of the circuit. Obviously, we don't get the best exit here. The McLaren clearly has a lot of engine power under it, but what on earth is that? Why is Van Dorn thought that's a good idea? He tries to go for a tiny, tiny gap, pins our right rear tyre, spins us round two times, breaks off half a front wing. He's got some damage as well. And so that has just not gone well, has it? At all. That is complete calamity and disaster. All the superlatives here at Monaco. And so we're down in last place, essentially, because Van Dorn's retired from that Grand Prix. Now serves him right as we now come in for a pit stop, change our front wing. We're on to ultra-soft tyres now, and we're going to have to take this middle compound attire right to the end of the Grand Prix but I want any kind of chance to make any sort of overtakes because right now I am going to be lapped at this stage of the race because on the mini map I think you're about to see the Toro Rosso, Pierre Gasly who's yet to pit in this Grand Prix, there he goes I've officially already been lapped at Monaco and I'm on lap 12 I'm yet to even get to about a third of the race distance and I've been lapped by the leader, which at this point is Gasly because he hasn't made a pit stop yet Ricardo obviously is the actual net race leader, but now I've got about half the circuit or more than that to make up, to even catch up to P18 Leclerc so I need to hope for a miracle and at the same time take these old soft tyres right to the end of the Grand Prix. So I need another miracle here. I need another pile-up like we had at Season 3 if I want to get back in this race pretty much. And so I know one thing's for certain. I'm not going to be the master of Monaco because I've been taken out brutally by Van Dorn. And it's meant that we move all the way to lap 21 for the very next highlight in this Grand Prix. Literally from lap 12 to lap 21, I was driving around just by myself trying to basically race myself and race the lap times 
and finally be able to take Alonso there after some pit stops are occurring. We're behind Brendan Hartley now on lap 26. So five laps later, after I overtake Alonso, who's now been overtaken by Leclerc subsequently, uh, the two McLaren's not going too well around Monaco here. We're going to try and overtake Brent Hartley if we can in the Toro Rosso on the outside now. We've tried it twice. Is it going to work the third time around? Third time lucky on the outside of the last corner. It has worked out third time lucky. Brilliant little pass on Hartley then. Just such a, such a shame. I could have had such a fun race like that, making moves like that. And so now as Leclerc goes side by side with Hartley, a nice little side by side battle between those two is Leclerc makes a very nice move as well for himself on the outside of the Kiwi man. But uh, yeah, so that was pretty much the only kind of highlights of my race after that was, you know, 10, 11 laps of doing nothing, overtake Alonso via pit stop, and then five laps of nothing, and then catching up to Hartley eventually to make a move. And then four laps after that, lap 30, I'm held up by Nico Hulkenberg and we're in a train with him and my teammate Raikkonen. So Raikkonen, but I don't know how his race has gone because I obviously have not seen him at all in this race as I try and make a bit of a fake dummy move on the inside of Hulkenberg in the last corner but it just wasn't really going to ever work out there. But Raikkonen's only two positions ahead of me now. So I've had a crash and that's why I'm down here. I don't know what has happened to Raikkonen or Hulkenberg as that matter of fact. I think both of them have just been hit with really bad traffic and that's meant that they're just down here in this uh, unfortunate position. We're all in a train now towards the end of this Grand Prix and actually in actual fact then I talked about being lapped by the leader Gasly at the time the actual real leader now Dan Ricardo comes through and I'm under blue flag so I let him go I thought okay maybe Ricardo whilst he overtakes Hulkenberg and Raikkonen with blue flags Maybe I can try and sneak up down the inside with him and make those passes. But alas, it's not really going to work out that exactly. Because on the very next lap, lap 33, Ricardo is catching Hulkenberg. But Hulkenberg uh, subsequently is also catching Raikkonen and fancies a pass down the inside. And there goes Hulkenberg now side by side in Mirabeau with Raikkonen. Those two go so slowly that invites me to make a pass and re-overtake Ricardo and get that place back. Of course, the rules state if you're fast enough, you can't unlap yourself. There's no rule against it. Famously, Lewis Hamilton did it in 20. 12 at the German Grand Prix at Hockenheim by unlapping himself against Sebastian Vettel to kind of age Jensen Button at the time. Uh, so we did that, and Raikkonen now is the one that's right ahead of us. But then we get to the last lap of the Grand Prix. Obviously, it's, it's lap 38 out of 39, but remember, it's Ricardo's last lap of the Grand Prix. I'm going to see if I can maybe catch Raikkonen, but if I can't, I will just play this cleverly. I don't want to bother doing a whole another lap of Monaco just being stuck behind cars. So I may as well let Ricardo through and have one less lap to do around Monaco. But you can see how close I am to overtaking Raikkonen, but it wouldn't matter. I'm in P16, Raikkonen's P15. If you think about it, it won't matter for points. This race has been an utter disaster for Ferrari. I thought last race was bad for us as a team. Raikkonen out the Grand Prix due to being crashed out by Leclerc. I went down the order to P, what was it, 7. This is a double no points finish here for Ferrari. This is exactly the opposite of what I wanted to happen when I came here to this team. And this is the kind of thing I need to try and rectify. But clearly, it's so ingrained in Ferrari's nature to have bad luck in F1 that I have a lot of work to do. This car has a lot of work to do, clearly, if I want to try and turn this luck around in this form for Ferrari at the moment. Because we're going to come through for no points here today for either of our cars. And it's going to be a very poor result. Okay, pick up rubber and bring it home. A great win then for the Red Bull team today. Tell me, Ant, what was the key to this success? I think a large part of the result comes down to temperament. They were able to keep their heads when everyone around them was losing theirs. And that's allowed them to get the best out of the car, to maximise the strategy and to stay out of trouble. And I can see now the drivers are making their way out. We need Red Bull fighting at the front. They do an incredible amount for Formula One. And that's another winner's trophy heading back to Milton Keynes. So in the end, there you have it. Dan Ricciardo becomes the master of Monaco and the first repeat winner in this season four of F1 2018 career mode. It was five different winners in the first five races, but now Ricciardo repeats a win. Obviously, he got the first win in the Australian Grand Prix. A crazy podium. Marcus Ericsson in the Sauber in second place and Valtteri Bottas in the Mercedes in third. Uh, you got the likes of Perez up there in P4, Grosjean on P5. Sainz does well, I guess, in P6, but he, he'll be disappointed because he was in P2 at the very start of the race. Uh, but 
crazy podium for Ericsson then. And I guess a little bit of justice for Ricardo after having two DNFs. Kind of fitting in a way that he becomes the first driver with two wins to kind of balance that out in a way. And for us though, at the Drivers' Championship now, it means we're in third place now behind both Ricardo and Verstappen. And you can see now, like I said, Red Bull, they've had two good races now. Not for both drivers, but they've had at least one guy do well and win the Grand Prix. So they're building that kind of, you know, energy up to start a bit of a title claim. And they're quite a bit ahead now in the, in the Constructors' Championship compared to what they were. Renault is still in P3, though, doing well. Mercedes, though, climb up ahead of Haas. McLaren go all the way down to P6. So despite them having a very quick car this season still, and Alonso looking so strong back at Bahrain, they're kind of falling down the order a little bit. They're going to they're gonna, they're gonna be a bit worried, I guess you could say. But uh, for us, yeah, like I said, we, we've got the bad luck of Ferrari as of late, as they have done in real life as well. At the same time, I feel like the car actually just isn't there. I feel like the bad luck is almost masking a little bit of just genuinely actually the car still has a long way to go, I think. I don't think the car is actually championship material at the moment. We have a lot of improvements to make. Uh, I've already kind of spaced out a few places where we need to make improvements. So we've got a game plan of how to improve this car, but we need to try and work fast and remain focused of trying to turn around at the moment what is a bit of bad form, two races in a row for us now. You're no longer in the top spot. Are you hoping to regain it? I can't really say much else apart from the bottom aisle, to, 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 be, to be brutally honest. I hope so. It's a disappointing day, and so that's the obvious answer for us. You left a lot of paint on the walls today. Were you struggling for grip, or did you just misjudge some corners? Obviously in the wars with Van Dorn and others, but we're going to go with the no comment. Don't want to kind of really go too much into that. Well, thanks anyway. So Calais left a bit frustrated with those answers, but... As it would be in real life, I don't think I'll be up for much talking after that Grand Prix. And uh, it's time to kind of put that behind us, Spain as well, and kind of move forward to one of my favourite Grand Prix on the calendar, the Canadian Grand Prix next episode. Hopefully, we can pick ourselves back up there and do better. But like I said, the car doesn't need improvements. It's not championship material yet. And so even at Canada, I'm not expecting amazing things. I feel like China almost is a big fluke and really has clouded my kind of perception of where the team was. Like at China, I thought, okay, Okay, we've got a really good car actually here. We could probably definitely go for the championship already. But uh, at the moment, it's very clear Red Bull are actually actually the best team for once on paper. You know, usually sometimes here and there you can say, oh, it's, uh, it only shows them performance char, but it's not actually there in reality or in the race. But you saw there now, last two races, Red Bull have actually finally been showing their true race pace and it's pretty damn good. So we need a lot of work. And one of those areas is the chassis. You know, we talked about doing engine upgrades. We've done a few. We still need to do work on the engine. Don't get me wrong. But the chassis, Although we're not too bad on the order, on the car, in the car, in the cockpit itself, it doesn't feel like where I needed to be. We need improvements on tire wear and we need improvements on the chassis re weight reduction because the car was feeling a little bit heavy around Monaco. And also, especially throughout this entire season so far, we've been hit with tire carcass heating issues. So we need to try and work on the tire wear in this, uh, in this car. So we're going to do two minor upgrades for the chassis, which will come in directly for next episode. Because two minors, one week each, next episode they'll come in. So that's going to be a positive straightaway booster for us at Montreal. So guys, if you have enjoyed that video nonetheless, then be sure to smash that like button and let me know in the comments below do you think we can turn this around? What do you make of the Ferrari form at the moment? Let me know what your thoughts are after that episode in the comments below. If you're around, did you get subscribed for weekly full-on content? I've been Arifa. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.